Um, real quick, my name again is Norman Phillip from the School of Construction over in College of Technology. Um, Portico Bowman um, is who I've worked with on this project. Unfortunately, Portico can't be here. Uh, she had a family issue. She, she had to go home up to Canada to deal with for a little while. Thankfully, everything is looking better than it was. Um, but she does send her regrets that she can't be here. There'll be a section that um, I'll try not to use her voice, but I'll, there's some of her words in here, and I'll let you know, and it's her talking. Otherwise, it sounds like I'm in the fourth person. Um, I'd have to change clothes a little bit to do that, I think so. Um, so what we've done is we've been teaching an interdisciplinary class on toy design, and I thought that it fit fit in really well with this series that Rona had sent me an email about, and the fact that it really ties together different things, and then Portico mentioned to me, because I didn't read the whole email, um, that it's about collective memory. And so I'm gonna start off with a little bit on collective memory, and we're just gonna see, because I see some millennials and some Gen Xers in here, I see a few baby boomers, might even be a few traditionalists in here as well, so let's see where this goes. So first off, I'm, I'm going to play four sounds for you. I want you to tell me what memories they do. By the way, I'm going to watch you, and I'm going to laugh like crazy, because I know what you're going to do. Or at least I think I do. So let's see what happens. Hopefully this will work. Please, technology. Oops. Play. OK. So. Anybody have a, have a flashback there suddenly? Okay, uh, some of the old, ooh, some of the younger ones. Okay, all right. So let's see if I can. Some of you are going like, what, what was that? So somebody, some people are, I think, showing their geek at, their mo at the moment. Let's try another one here. Ah, there we go. All right, I'm gonna, I gotta watch this one. This is gonna be fun. Okay, so if I, if I talk about this and the fact that this is all dealing with toys. But in looking at that, we can talk about those collective memories that all of us can share. Um, anybody in here a fan of watching The Big Bang Theory? There was an episode where Amy's trying to get Sheldon to like her more. She uses subliminal messaging. How do I get him to like me? There are, oh, da da da, dinner music. Sheldon started watching the table, boing, boing. I, I love that episode because it brings the fact of the idea that toys kind of define who we were as children. Um, I'll have a quote here in a little bit. I, like I said, with Portico not being here, I kind of had to rewrite this last night. <laughs> so we're seeing where it is. So we're t what I want you to look at is how can we use this collective memory uh, towards enabling art and technology students? So this is where I'm switching over into the Portico version. So Portico's thought on all this was that she kind of had this look of, well, I've got all these art students, and there's, there seems to be a broad variety of areas for the ones that have skills in the 2D areas to go into, but it, there were some, when she was thinking about it, there were limitations as to where uh, some of the 3D skills might go, okay? And when I say this, realize that Portico, in her own words, um, adamantly screams from the mountaintop, she is not a techie. Um, she is, uh, I like my art to be here, I like it to sit still so I can contemplate it and do things like that. So she was trying to think about these ways and um, within those thoughts she had the idea that toy design kind of came to mind of like, how do I take this artistic skill and find another marketable avenue for it other than being a, quote, professional artist? And remember, this is my interpretation of her words. Um, the idea of it requiring creativity and ability to think and design in three dimensions. So in her, in her background, her professional studio practice of 25 plus years was on exploring childhood development. So she was already in that kind of child's mind and how she looked at a lot of this. So connecting with children's approach to image and symbol, answer, artistic questions about the origins of personal identity. 
I can kind of redefine that as she was looking at how children use art to help define themselves on who they could be, what is their future, what, what, what is the world to them, okay? At least that's my way I interpret her words. Um, so, and from that, she took an easy and logical step to toy design, because we all admit we like to make our own toys, don't we? Um, course prep and research that she looked at, uh, Christina Castella at the Pasadena School of Art and Design. Portico is um, blessed to be able to go there for a three-day observation uh, to view coursework that they do there already in toy design, see what they're doing, see how she engages students, how does she make that class actually tie into art and technology and things of the other areas, a true interdisciplinary way to think, okay? Um, along with that, she went to the, excuse me, Chicago Toy and Game Fair, which is held in Chicago annually. And when she was at that, it, in, in, her, in her definition to me, it was the fact that it opened up her eyes. She thought toy design was a possibility. Shy Tag proved it to her that this was an area where there was a lot of growth and she could see benefits for her students. So next comes the major question. Why in the world would she go over to the College of Technology? Why in the world? Well, as she said, she is not a techie. She likes to work with her hands. <laughs> um, so she thought the idea, well, I'm doing this class. Hey, 3D printing's kind of cool. It's this new thing. It'll get kids involved. She had no idea how to use a 3D printer. She, yeah, let's leave it there. Um, in her words, she likes to think, make art so it can think more while I'm thinking about what I'm thinking about. She thinks a lot. Um, in other words, my art sits still while I think about it. Um, no mind for 3D printer technology, non-techie. What's the solution? Well, it turned out to be me. <laughs> um, what happened was she found out through, at the time, I had just done one of the videos through the university on new technology we had in the School of Construction. We've got a large format 3D printer that we use, and seeing as I had just been hired, they said, here, play with this and t tell us how it works. Okay? So I became fairly adept at it, and plus, I'm a uber toy geek. Um, my office is a testament to that. There's probably more toys than textbooks. Um, but that's also because I use toys to teach. I think they're great tools. The Slinky is the greatest teaching tool ever invented. Um, so I, of course, immediately responded to the entire idea of the class. My background is in design, and yet I teach construction. It was an out-to-go play. So, um, we both th so as she says, we both like to think as kids. Both of us were trained at one time, went through architecture training. I have architecture degrees. She at one time looked at it as a possible career. And we're and one of the key things is that we're both committed to giving KU students success and ongoing options for development opportunities within the world. Oh, wrong one. There we go. So collaboration, things that are going on for how we work. Everything seems to be working well so far. We've done the course for two spring semesters now. We're taking this semester off as a hiatus, trying to regroup, plan, see what's going on, identify all the mines that we stepped on the way here. Um, but different things, so the key way that we work the class is Portico tends to cover the artistic design and uh, design development portion of it. I tend to work on the implementation of technology, and I teach things like motion, mechanics, um, sometimes logic, since, yeah. Uh, but the key thing is we both like to make our students think about what they're doing, and we both love to watch them play. Um, I think people learn more through play than through anything else. So what's the purpose of the course? I'm gonna step over just a little bit because I'm, like I said, I had to throw this together, so. Um, key issues, and this comes out of our uh, syllabus for the course, but we identify questions of what is play? Um, why does it matter to people? What is its function? What is the purpose of play, okay? Um, what makes a good toy? What makes a great toy? What makes a timeless toy? Other ones, why are Legos still so cool? Why do we still buy Barbie dolls? And why is it important to matter how much each property costs on that Monopoly board? So different ideas, concepts of form and function and imaginative play and game dynamics for thinking logically and problem solving. These are all things that we wanted to look at. So we wanted to look at these questions along with help empowering the students to be able to make toys of their own. Um, 
We talk about marketing, licensing, things in the toy industry. Again, I went to Shytag this last year, and I will admit technology is strong. And yet at the same time I see technology, I see Jenga blocks the size of two by fours, and I'm like, yes, both factors, I love this. However, stepping into this game means we need to empower these students with a lot of these new skills to help them understand what's going on. How do you take this art degree and apply it into a business environment while still keeping the imagination of play and what's going on? So we talk about different abilities. Um, this last line down here, Portico found this, and I love this, and I'll make a reference to it here at the very end again. But um, Jean Piget, Jean Piget, sorry, uh, this is a famous child psych childhood psychologist. I hope I'm saying the name right. Jean Piaget. Jean Piaget. Um, it's in play that we begin to already try on roles that we may pursue for careers as adults. And if I have time at the end, I'll reference a just released commercial um, I'll talk about in a second that really empowers this. So let's kind of look at where we're going. So, so um, as our wonderful media department here at the university defined this in their uh, YouTube bit, um, let's start a little bit of a journey. Let's talk about our toy story here. So now I've got a short video for you. called Toy Design, and I put in parentheses after that beta. Uh, it is the very first time that it's uh, been taught here, and it's an attempt to understand the, um, uh, the industry and art of toy design, giving them an opportunity to create uh, with their talent uh, forms that could be marketed in the toy design field. This is actually one of the few courses I think that we've offered here at Pitt State, where we've actually taken two fairly dissimilar areas across campus and combined them up in one course. But it's a better representation, I think, of what's actually going on within industry and in the world, is the fact that you see cross-collaboration between art and technology. This class is an example of exposing students to be able to see both facets and how to put them together so they can actually create and put something out into the world. Well, I'm creating a book called Eugene the Odd Dust Bunny, and he also comes with a little plushy doll. But basically, the book just goes through and talks about how being different is okay. Nobody else in the class is really doing a board game, and I also thought it kind of be fun, and I like to play board games. Um, I used to play a lot of video games in high school, but I've kind of gotten away from that. <laughs> My Xbox has dust all over it now, because I, I hardly ever touch it. And I'd rather just play a board game with my friends. My toy is Nature to Go, is kind of what I'm calling it. Um, it's a box that the child will be able to open up. Um, there's different items inside of it to make a nature scene. Um, there's cutout trees that have different garlands for different seasons. Um, basically, I just want it to be an object that they can take with them to go outside, add to it, create more of their scenes, just to use their imagination, to get them thinking about nature. It's been extremely exciting to see everybody find their own place within this gigantic world of toy design, and um, I'm extremely impressed. To see the idea all within them in the same time that they're learning throughout the process of, oh, there's this step also, I can't just jump, I have to to this step and this step to get where I want to go. It's been very enjoyable to see that from the students. As you can see, I like to make lots of references here. Um, one of the key aspects that uh, we didn't do it the first year, the second year I tried implementing it, was you saw a little bit of there where Portico was turning that piece that had the homemade gears and things on it, was that we evolved that into our, one of our first things we did was a cam and gear project. And I challenged the students to say, okay, well, whatever your project is, I want it to teach it to teach a STEM principle. You see a lot of times in K through K through 12, especially in elementary, educators are utilizing games in the classroom to help teach these lessons. Um, my, ch my kids go to George Nettles and they teach fractions with Legos. Um, for when they talk about early idea making, they actually have different things that they can utilize for 
uh, Lego Robotics. Um, <laughs> One of my first roommates in college was a business student, and every week on Friday, they'd get in their little suits, and they would play Monopoly. They were preparing for the real world. <laughs> they had to keep real books, but it was fun. So what exactly does a toy design course look like? Well, everything we've done is based around the framework of what we've seen at the Otis School of Art and Design, and also what's at Pasadena, Center Art, Pasadena Art Center College of Design. Um, the first one is the second one here the one, is the one that uh, Portigo was able to go to. I think I have those the right direction. OK. So, <laughs> thank you. Um, within that, it defines what are major categories of toys. So there's plush toys, preschool, dolls, action figures, toy vehicles, and games. Uh, we also look at areas of child psychology and development, marketing, engineering, model making, digital design, computer rendering, packaging, and even presentation. Um, on the presentation level, I one thing the students had to do this last year was we made them do a shark tank. I made them sit up there and try and pitch to me as a game investor why I should buy their game, why I should invest in it to develop it. And it really made them think about, well, what is my project about? And so it was really, help really useful for getting the students to have a better understanding of other than just, what did you do today? Oh, I made get toys. It turned into, well, I made a toy that helps students better understand that it's okay to be different or things of that nature. So things that we had the students take away from is the ability to discuss their work and other students' work in a critical and analytical manner, um, explain and indicate elements of principle of art relating to objects, uh, describe and discuss requirements as they relate to the toy design industry, um, describe, visually analyze, judge, explain quality of construction forms. Why is it that form? Why did you make it that way? How does that change the interaction with the person utilizing your toy. And then also 3D uh, problem solving using visual organization, logic, and things of that nature as well. Uh, we talked about art-related composition, media, personal aesthetics. What is the playworthiness of toy? Um, using toy design, we talked about unique and flexible way to solve our problems. Um, one of the key areas that we're still working on developing is understanding the requirements of marketing, licensing, and toy sales. We're trying to talk more with the business school about ways to integrate that better even. We made the students actually conduct a toy sale. You saw the, this, that video was from the first class. And for two years, we have held a toy sale out on the Oval. And for two years, we have sold out. In fact, uh, uh, Catherine Chapson, how do you say Kat's last name? Jepson. Um, she actually ended up taking orders for five more. She had to produce three for the toy sale. She ended up selling eight because she took orders for five more. One of the students that made the plushies, she actually had orders for about, I think, six or eight more. So they were actually getting a lot of people interested in this. Um, I think a lot of professors liked it because they were nice, unique toys that they could take home, well, or put in their office. <clears throat> uh, yeah. So here's some previous projects. So here's Eugene, the dust bunny. And as you can see, it was a book and toy interrelated. It was to be able to help kids better understand it's okay to be a little different, things like that. This was really good. The, the student that worked on this, she learned a lot about how to integrate it so that it would work well for the children and how to tie it together. We've seen, a, you see more and more of this. I think Hallmark about every year puts out a doll that can interact with a book now. And so it's kind of that same idea, but I like the fact that this is a lesson that helps kids be able to enable themselves to accept who they are and be happy with that. Um, oh, I might as well do it the right way. So the student that talked about the game, he made this one called Piggy Bank. The purpose of it was to help small children learn how to start saving money. It was a fun one to do. Um, here's some of the plushies that she made. They, they were very, I, I love how um, animated these faces are. But again, it was just, she found that area that she was really happy with, and she was able to just elaborate on these characters, and just, as soon as she'd finished one, she already had the sketches for like two or three more. So it was wonderful to see that growth. Oh, here's Catherine's, which was uh, Nature to Go, but, and I love this. She had all of this beautiful packaging, instructions. <laughs> Most people forgot instructions. <laughs> But all these parts, um, this portion, 
she made. This portion she actually utilized our 3D printer. We actually scanned physical sticks <laughs> and we printed them out on the 3D printer so they'd match. And they have little cutouts similar to Lincoln Logs but not Lincoln Logs. So we talked about trademarking <laughs> and patents. <laughs> so you can see how people interact with it a little bit. Uh, one of my students, huge NASCAR fan, he said, hey, um, I want to do I want to figure out how bobbleheads work. And so we looked at different areas and uh, the bodies were actually 3D printed and he custom molded the heads and then we were able to make replicas of them taking a cast off of them. So different processes for how do you make something repeatable. Alphas, this is actually, except for the box, this is fully 3D printed. So all the student designed all of the parts, how they interacted with each other. We printed them out figured out how to assemble the project, and he, he even developed his own packaging for this. So it was really wonderful to see that. So, and there's been a whole semester of that. I'm, I just put up what were some of the key ones. You might have seen them in the video. So like I said, we've been on a hiatus for the 2016 semester. Um, we do plan, there will be a continuation of the course in spring of 2017 per all current plans. I'm looking at Rona when I say this. Or, or, Rona, Emily, whoever I need to, mm -hmm. um, it, it, I, I will say that when we first talked about this class, it was really interesting to be in a room that had my boss, who's in charge of the school of construction, and Rona, who was the chair at the time, and Portico and I just sitting there like eager children going, please agree, please agree, please agree. So. Um, we're looking forward to future development of additional supplemental courses. We would like to take this course. You saw that's a lot to cram in one course. We have to fly over it. We want to eventually develop it into multiple courses and hopefully eventually into a minor or even a major of its own. Um, this is a highly marketable area for students who are looking for possibilities. Um, different areas that, when, I've, when I was at Chicago Toy Game Fair this last year, when I was talking to people, and told them about the course. I had people that were in video games, that were in handhelds, that were in technology building toys, anything like that. They were interested saying, yes, send us some students. We'd be interested in them. We want them for internships. We want to actually be able to hire these people. So, and one thing last year, um, this is the shameless plug, is that if anybody is interested in helping us to further development, Portico and I will greatly accept your help. Um, or if you know a student that might want to take the course in the future, mention it to them. If you know a professor in a different department, whether it be business or um, graphics Im imaging technology, somebody else within the art department, heck, even somebody within nursing, I can probably figure out how to involve nursing as well. We can adapt this into a truly interdisciplinary cross campus uh, area that we can develop. So, I do want to thank you guys for coming to play with me today. So, um, and lastly, how are we on time? Okay, so I don't have the video. I don't have the video up here, but um, if you remember that quote at the bottom where it talked about toys help us try out these different roles for what we can be, um, I shared it with um, Portico and a few other people the other day when it came across to me. There is a brand new Barbie commercial out. The start of the commercial shows a little girl walking, walking into the room and into a, you have students coming into a lecture hall and a little girl walks into the front, probably about six or seven, says, hello, today I'll be your professor and we're gonna talk about the brain. It shifts over to another one and it shows a guy coming into a veterinary office and there's a little girl standing there at the vet table like this, all bright eyed. The guy comes in and says, hello. She says, hi, I'm your vet today. Really? She says, yes, see it says doctor. <laughs> Moves to an airport. People sitting around waiting for their flight. A little girl walks over. She's holding her phone. It's like, oh, I had the best meeting today. Yes. Oh, yes. I've been, I've been to New York. I've been to New Hampshire. I've been to New Switzerland. Really cute. And it's going through showing these kids playing through these roles, almost like they're doing dress up. And at the end, it kind of shifts over and it goes back to the little girl in the classroom. And suddenly, it's the little girl sitting there holding her Barbie, teaching the class to the rest of her dolls. It shows the little girl standing there holding the Barbie doing the vet work. The Barbie sitting there in her business attire making her business call and all that. And I loved it because it's one of those things that empowers children. It's the fact that Barbie is not just, oh, 
what Barbie was back in the back when she first came out. It wasn't the Lucille Ball Barbie. It was the Barbie can do anything. Um, and I, I, I will admit, I'm going on a little bit of a rant here of empowering young women. I have a daughter, so I hardly believe in this. Um, another pro product that came out recently was Goldie Blocks. Anybody see that? They had a great commercial during the Super Bowl about two or three years ago. But it's basically Rube Goldberg type equipment that little girls can build whenever they want. I'm in construction, I love it, because they, they can do that. But you see this in the fact that when a little kid picks up a transformer, he's not that little kid, he's that transformer. They pick up that, they start pushing that Thomas the train around the floor, they're the engineer running Thomas. It's the fact that it allows people to fully explore areas that maybe isn't directly available to them to explore. And so that's one of the reasons why I highly believe in this class, because one, it lets my students enable future children to do that, but it also enables them to see what can I be. So with that, I'll take any questions if we have any now.